that we do. Praise God. All righty, let us pray. Our Father and our God, it's always a joy. Thank you so much for waking us up this morning, strong, hale, and hearty. Thank you for the many promises that you have made to us, some of which are going to come to pass this day. We pray, Father, that we will not miss those opportunities. We will see them and we will take full advantage of them. As we go into your word, let it be known that our gathering is unto you and not unto any man. And therefore, we ask that you be present in power to heal, to restore, to forgive, to encourage, to strengthen, to teach, O oh God, that we may continue to chase after you, O oh God, until we apprehend the reasons for which we were apprehended. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be glorified. Amen. Praise Amen. God. This is I Believe Bible Fellowship. We're in Houston, Texas. We uh, believe that scriptures should be studied line upon line, precept upon precept. There's no one who buys a book and jumps a, about the chapters and the paragraphs in the book, but you read it from the first word to the last word. That way you get a clear understanding of the heart of the author. And so we've been studying the Bibles. Uh, it's about a year and a half, almost two years now. We're in the Old Testament and we're in the book of Psalms. And I believe yesterday we stopped at Psalms 145. So we'll pick it up from 146 today. Hopefully we'll finish off the Psalms today if it's, if it's not packed. Psalms 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. For the way of the wicked he turneth, but the way of the wicked he, turn, he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. All right, praise the Lord. The Bible is not clear who the author of this psalm is, but whoever it is, we know that ultimately all scripture is inspired by God. So we know that God wrote it through whomever, but it sounds like what David would write because David was a praiser. The psalm opens up with an injunction, not a suggestion. It says, praise ye the Lord. Not dependent on your feelings, not dependent on anything that you're going through, not dependent on nothing. Praise the Lord. That's what the Bible says. And so regardless of where you find yourself, regardless of the situation that you may be in, you have to praise the Lord. Praises to God is an act of gratitude. If you're grateful for all that God has done to you, for you, then you ought to praise him. You ought to be thankful. And that's what praise is. And if you recall when we talked about the nine kinds of prayers that we find in the Old Testament, the prayer of praise was one of them. All right, the Psalms are replete with examples, okay? Um, I don't know whether to say sadly or unfortunately, but whatever, uh, Americans are not used to uh, monarchy. If you, if you experience where a king is being praised, especially in Africa, you will understand what it is to offer praises unto God. They talk about the genealogy of the king. They talk about his prowess at warfare. They talk about his wealth. They talk about the number of children he has. I mean, they just go on and on with drums and beats and dance steps and stuff like that. I'm sure if you Google it, or if you go on YouTube, you'll find something that will show you how an, a mere mortal is being literally worshiped. And so we need to learn how to praise God. We need to learn how to dance before him with or without music. The music is in my head. I'm constantly dancing. We need to learn how to do that in spite of everything that we're going through because it just totally confuses the enemy. 
is wondering, is she not supposed to be sad? Did this not just happen to her? Did that not just happen around her? Why is she happy? Why is she dancing? Well, the secret of it is that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So if I want to keep operating with strength, I have to be joyful. And fortunately, joy has nothing to do with your soul. Absolutely nothing. Because joy is different from happiness. Happiness is in the soul, is in your mind. Something great happens, you're happy. Something terrible happens, you're sad. Joy is not like that. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22. And so it is constant. As long as I'm in touch with heaven, as long as I'm in touch with the spirit of God, I am joyful. And praise God. The thing about the flesh is, if you start to do the opposite of what your flesh is trying to tell you to do, it will not be long before you break through the veil of the flesh and you come into the very presence, the very Shekinah glory of God. And you cannot be in the presence of God and still have all of those things you know, troubling your mind. So that, these are the secrets to, to successful Christian life where it looks like you are invincible because you don't let stuff dictate what's going on with you. You don't give the reins of your innermost recesses to people to push your buttons and control you, all right? Praise ye the Lord is an injunction. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, your mind through your will, controlling your emotions, dictating your outcomes. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, in my mind, as an act of my will, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us lift up his name together. So it's an act of our will to praise God. It has nothing to do with what we're going through or how we're feeling. In my soul, in my emotions, I command my emotions to be still. You're dead. You can't tell me what to do. This body is dead. Don't bathe it for a couple of days. It will remind you that it's decaying. Glory to God. In my imagination, I praise him. With my intellect, I praise him. With my mind, with my will, with my emotions, I praise him. With all of my being, which is my spirit, my soul, and my body. Praise God. He says, while I live, will I praise the Lord? The Bible says only the living can praise the Lord. The dead cannot praise him. Unfortunately, these guys in the Old Testament did not know that there was something called resurrection. Only those who had a prophetic unction would catch a glimpse of what was to come. So as far as they knew, when you died, you died. But glory to God, we have a hope. And it's the hope of resurrection. Death is just the passageway. I am not afraid to die. If God says, now I'm good to go. Good to go. There's nothing else to achieve. Praise God forevermore. Everything they've done, I've done. Hallelujah. I understand that it's a doorway and I understand be behind that door is eternity. You know, it's like the song, I think it was, uh, is it Bob Marley or Jimmy Cliff? I don't know who sang. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Praise God forevermore. So while you're alive, sing praises unto God. While you have any being, while you can still move. The Bible says in him, you live, you move, and you have your being. And if it's the reason why you're alive, then you owe it to him to praise him. Say, so do not trust in princes. Don't trust in wealth. Don't trust in the promise of anybody. They may have the fullest of good intentions to do what they have promised you. Their circumstances can change like that. And they'd be like, you know what? I really wanted to do it, but I'm sorry. Stuff came up. I got to take care of Junior. Because Junior takes precedence over you. Don't trust in man. The Bible says vain is the help of man. Someone please put that up. Hallelujah. Don't trust in man. Trust in God. You have a challenge. Go to him first. Let him tell you go to. Then you know when you go to whoever, they will do it because God said to go to them. I told you how I bought my first house. The guy loaned me the money to buy the money from himself. That's the truth. He loaned me the money for 30 days. I, I, I ran around. 
I went to the person God said, go to this man, he will help you. Those were his exact words. And I went to this elderly man and he said, listen, I've been watching you since your husband married you, you're different. You're very industrious, you're very hardworking. Come back and see me next week, Tuesday, I think it was, or Thursday. And he gave me the money, payable when able. So I took the money to the guy I bought the house from and I paid this guy over a period of 92 to 2000. I paid him back over a period of eight years. He never once asked me, hello, where's my money? If you go where God says to go to get help, you will get help. So don't trust in anybody's promises. Trust in the Lord your God. All right? He says his breath goes forth. The man who is promising you, I will help you. I will do this for you. His breath goes forth. He returns to the earth. In that very day, his good thoughts towards you perish. All right? He says, happy is the person who has the God of Jacob for his help. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Why? Because that is where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. I don't care what threats people are making. This is the deadline. That, there's no deadline. COVID-19 told us and showed us that there's no deadline. Glory to God. If he could suspend the sun for Joshua, what will he not do for you? Come find out how important the sun is to our solar system. God stopped it. And then when they were trying to figure out the calendar, they say one day is missing. And so they, 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 they take one quarter days, four one quarter days, and they have a leap year. The, the day you're looking for is the day Joshua stopped the sun. Glory to God. All right? Let God be your help. Go to him first. Let him be first recourse. Hallelujah. Says the God which made the heaven and the earth. Don't make a mistake. It's not the one that has mouth that cannot speak, eyes that cannot see. The one you put in your pocket or the one you hang around your neck or, or the one that's up on the on the whatever in your bedroom or the one that's under the bed. If your God lives under the bed, then I'm sorry for you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't make a mistake about it. It's the one that made the heavens and the earth. The sovereign one, the almighty, the invincible one. Glory to God. The Bible says he, obtain, he upholds all things by the power of his word. All he has to say is, this and it is so god told me one time that i was praying in that my little apartment in staten island i had such a wonderful time with god he said ever since i told light to start running to be it has been running at the speed of 186,000 miles per second and it has never slowed down because his word stands forever sure hallelujah glory to god is the God that made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and everything that is in it. And we haven't even discovered all of it. The other day I was reading about a fish or something like that that lives in the deepest part, the deepest part that man has been able to go to. Not the deepest part. And this fish is supposed to have five hearts or something ridiculous like that. Because of the incredible pressure under which it's living. Maybe it shuts them off one by one. I don't know. But what do you need five hearts for? And I was talking to my sister, Mrs. O, the other day, and we were just, we were just laughing at the quirkness of God's humor sometimes, all right? So I'm a mama, but I fly, and I hang upside down. Deal with it. That's a bat. <laughs> Mrs. O said a platypus. Are you a duck or a seal? What exactly are you? It's like when God has made everything, he then throws one funny one in there. And he says, all right, go figure. I'm a mama. I live in the sea and my, my, my young suckle, <laughs> go figure. This is the God that we serve. He reserves the right to do whatever he pleases. The Bible says he sits in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. No one can ask him what doest thou. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says he executes, he executes judgment for the oppressed because God is a just God. God is a righteous God. Hallelujah. All right, he gives food to the hungry and he loses the prisoners. If you are unjustly held, God will set you free. If you are justly held, God will still set you free because the Bible says, shall the lawful captive be set free? Hallelujah. I think it's Isaiah. I love that scripture. Let me look for it. If you can do it faster, do it for me. 
It says the lawful captive will be set free. Even though the devil has a justification <laughs> to oppress you. Scripture says the lawful captive shall be set free. Glory to God. I can't find it. Go find it. That's your homework. Hallelujah. God is awesome. He executes judgment for the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. He loses the prisoner, whether justly or unjustly held. God will set you free. He opens the eyes of the blind. And that can be literal and it can be figurative. All right. I am, I am earnestly longing for the days when th these miracles that we read about will begin to happen again in the body of Christ. And if we, if we, if we press and we push, it will happen. It will happen. I'm tired of reading about Elijah and Elisha and Paul. Jesus Christ said, greater works you will do. I'm to the point now where I'm telling God, teach me how to pray so that I can pray aright to be able to draw on your power. We have to be able to say to the limbs, rise up and walk and it be so. Unstop deaf ears, open blind eyes. That's how it's supposed to be. The church is, we're powerless. And it's sad. And that's why the world has no confidence and no trust in us. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. The Bible, the Bible says the Lord preserves the strangers because God's heart towards strangers is tender. There are four categories of people that God said don't mess with them. I am their defense. If you mess with them, you deal with me. The widow, the fatherless, the stranger, and the poor. That's the purpose of the tithe. And the fifth purpose of the tithe is to, to, to take care of the Levites because the Levites get a tenth of what the children of Israel bring in. So the children of Israel bring their tenth and they put it together and the Levites take a tenth of that tenth that the children of Israel brought in. The rest was supposed to take care of the widow, the fatherless, the stranger, and the poor. Not what ministers are doing today. What, what job did you do? What, what work did you do that you bought three jets? or you bought two jets or five jets or whatever. What did you do? You took church money and you established businesses. And of course the businesses began to flourish. We knew you when you started. We knew how many shirts you had, how many pants you had. We saw your shoes. It's really sad. Glory to God. The Bible says the Lord preserves the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. God doesn't even have to turn the way of the wicked upside down. The choices they make already turn their way upside down. God is not in the business of hounding anybody. All right? You're free to choose what you like, but you're not free to choose the consequences of what you have chosen. Hallelujah. He says the Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. The Lord shall reign forever, and that he will, because Jesus is coming back to wrap up all this nonsense that we're having to deal with, constant vexation of spirits. He's coming to put an end to all of that, and he will establish his 1,000-year reign where there will be no sin, because the devil would have been bound and thrown into the bottomless pit for a 1,000 years. Glory to God. And then he closes by reminding you of the injunction, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Any thoughts? Any questions? Any personal experiences? Hallelujah. Did someone find that scripture in the book of Isaiah? Isaiah 49, 24 through 26. Thank you. 49. I was thinking 41, 49. The lawful captive shall be set free. Glory to God. His mercies are unsearchable. All right, no questions, no comments. Psalms 147, again, it opens with an injunction. Praise ye the Lord, for it is, it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His under, understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meek, he casted the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, 
who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow to wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like mussels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Again, like I said, it opens up with the same injunction that we praise the Lord regardless. And then he gives us some reasons why we should. He says it's good to sing praises unto our God because it is pleasant and because praise is comely. It's an old English word for looking good. When someone says you look comely, it, it, it means you're looking good, which means praise looks good on us. That's where Don Moen gets that title to his song. When we praise God, we look good, we feel good. There have been <clears throat> experiments done with music and the power of music, it's incredible. Dr. Ben Carson, if you haven't read his book, I forget the title, you need to grab a hold of it. How he started and how he does surgery or how he used to do surgery, I'm not sure that he still does, right? He, he would do it to the sound of music. And he, he, his testimony is that the music does something to him. I read of an experiment they did once with plants. They planted the very same kind of plants, two of them, same conditions. The only variable was the music they exposed both to. One was exposed to classical music. The other was exposed to rock music. After the stipulated time, the two plants grew up very different from each other. And that was the only variable. When Saul was tormented by an evil spirit, all right, they went to look for a minstrel, David, to come and play some instruments. You know you can set moods with music, all right? That's why you have to be careful the stuff that you listen to. You cannot listen to a worship song and feel like fornicating. It's not possible. But when you go and listen to sexual healing and you're listening to touch me here, lift me here, carry me there, do this there, it's going to invoke those feelings and you will not be able to control yourself. That's why I keep telling you all of the orifices of your body are gateways into your soul. When the Bible says, guard your heart diligently, it's not joke, joking and it's not playing with you. And I've told you this is what your heart looks like. Your soul and your spirit is what the Bible calls your heart not the physical thing that's pumping blood. You've got to guard your ear gates, guard your eye gates. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise is good. It says God builds up Jerusalem, Psalm 22, 3. He says he inhabits your praises. If you want the presence of God, keep praise worship going on. Thank God we have the repeat function now. Just keep it going 24-7. Set the mood and the atmosphere in your house like you do or like you did when you were in the world. Yes, I know about it. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel because God is ever mindful of the downtrodden. All right. God never writes anybody off. That's one valuable lesson my, my beloved late grandfather taught me, all right? Or I should say taught us, because every one of us know it. He said a clock that is irreparably damaged can never be fixed again. Is right twice a day. Because if it broke down at 4 o'clock, at 4 p.m. it is right, at 4 a.m. it is right. So you never write anyone off. There's no one that's irredeemable. Glory to God. Uh, so God is <clears throat> mindful of the outcasts, he's mindful of the stranger. He told the children of Israel, he said, remember you were strangers in Egypt, so treat strangers well. Paul in the book of Hebrews also says it. I know the Bible doesn't tell us 
the author of, of uh, the book of Hebrews, but there's enough writing in there for us to know that Paul is the one who wrote it. If you read the last chapter, there's inference uh, by Peter. The last chapter of, I think it's first Peter or second Peter, I don't know, one of the two. There's inference there that Paul is the one that wrote the book of Hebrews. So I believe that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. Glory to God. Uh, he says he tells the number of the stars. We, we should just close and start praising right now. He tells the number of the stars. Talk about attention to detail. What are you going through that you think he doesn't know? What are you going through that you think he doesn't understand? What are you waiting on that you're fretting? What? He's a father. An irresponsible father at that. And if you had a, 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 a not so good father, I'm sorry about it, but don't judge God by that. That's unfair. Hallelujah. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each one of them by their names. The Bible says he knows every strand of hair on your head. What that means is when I stand in front of the mirror every morning and I groom myself, every time I brush my hair, the number of strands that fall off, one angel tells him. When she brushed her hair this morning, 15 strands fell off. God knows. There's nothing you're going through that he doesn't understand and that he doesn't have absolute control over. I'm an earthly parent. You cannot touch my child. I will die. I, literally, I will die fighting for my child. Not to come and talk of Almighty God concerning you. Hallelujah. He says, Great is our Lord and of great power. His under, understanding is bottomless, unsearchable, infinite. We, we can't understand Him. The little we understand, we are in awe. Moses said, Oh, that I might see your face. God said, You can't see me. <laughs> Moses, I know how you feel, but you cannot see me. And live. But you know what? I will show you my back parts. I will hide you in the cleft of the rock because even my back parts, you have to be hidden to see it. God passed by. Moses saw his back parts. Moses came down from the mountain. The children of Israel could not look upon his face. They had to put a veil on him. Please tell me what would have happened had he seen Jehovah face to face. And I'm not talking about the Jehovah Witness of the Jehovah Witnesses. That's not God. Don't know who that entity is. Hallelujah. He's awesome. And this is your father. This is the one who says to you, come. He never says, get away. He says, come. What's and all, just come. He loves you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord lifted up the meek. He cast out the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Seek praise upon the harp unto our God. If you can play an instrument, fantastic. If you cannot, make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. It's allowed. He says, he covers the heavens with the clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes the grass to grow upon the mountains. He gives all the beasts of the field their food, even birds which cry. He delights not in the strength of horses not, and he does not take pleasure in the legs of man. Vain is the help of man. Even you yourself. You need to, you, you need to, you need to understand that. How, how do I say what is in my heart? You are flesh as well. And so you cannot trust yourself. You cannot trust in yourself. You cannot trust your, your money. You cannot trust your education. You cannot trust your family connection. You cannot trust any of those things. They can fail. The only person who never fails is God. All right? <clears throat> he doesn't delight in the strength of horses. He does not take pleasure in the legs of man. But God takes pleasure in those that trust him. Those that have reverential fear of God. Knowing that he's awesome. Praise God. He says, praise God. Praise the Lord of Jerusalem, 
Praise your God, O Zion, your own God. You've got to have a relationship with him and you've got to praise him. Why? Because he has strengthened the bars of your gates. In essence, you are secure. There will be no breaking in. There will be no coming out. That's what we saw in the previous psalm. You're secure. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. No enemy can come against you without the father knowing. It's not possible. He says, whoever touches you, touches the apple of mine eye. Hallelujah. He has blessed your children within your gates. They are safe and they are secure. He makes peace in your borders, fills you with the finest of wheat, makes peace in your home. Husbands and wives, if only you understood marriage. Ha. The Bible says one shall put to flight a thousand, two, ten thousand. The Bible says two are better than one. If you understand the power of two, it's the power of multiplication. And by extension, the power of exponential multiplication. If only husbands and wives understood the power. I keep saying it, the man I marry, when God brings him, he will go to heaven before he goes to heaven. Glory to God. He makes peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He provides for you. He sends forth his commandment upon the earth and his word runs swiftly. You have to have the word. It comes up every day we meet. You have to set aside time. You have to be intentional. You have to be deliberate. You have to memorize scriptures. You cannot withdraw where you have not deposited. You've got to speak the word because it runs swiftly. He says, I watch over my word to perform it. He says, I've exalted my word above my name. He says, my word stands forever sure. He says, my word will never return to me void. He says, heaven and earth will pass away. Not a jot, a jot or a title of my word will ever go unfulfilled. If you don't understand by now how important the word of God is in the scheme of things, then I don't know what language to speak. You've got to know the word and you've got to study the word and you've got to understand the word and you've got to use the word. You've got to put the word of God upon your lips. Everything should revolve around the word. And at the end of the day, the word is Jesus. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus. And the word was with God. And Jesus was with God. And the word was God. And Jesus was God. There's nothing more important in life. Nothing. It says he sends forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the, uh, the hoar frost like ashes. Cast forth his eyes like mussels. Who can stand before his cold? Sent out his word. His word. Sent out his word and melts them. Causes his wind to blow waters flow. He shows his word unto Jacob. Tell God to show you his word. Tell God to give you understanding. Tell God to open your eyes to see the truth that's in the word. It's not the exclusive preserve of pastors to understand the word. It's for all of us, his children. We're first of all children of God, brothers and sisters, before we stand in any office. It's an office. It's not who I am. Because he can move me from a pastoral office into something else. But I still remain his child. Hallelujah. He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Well, this was the case in their time. <clears throat> when we get to the book of Daniel and we study the 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy, you will understand better. God suspended his plan with the children of Israel in the 69th week. And he introduced the church age, which we're still in now. That's why the church is called the great parenthesis. 
And that's why he has to remove us in what is called the rapture so that he can resume that last week of Daniel's prophecy, which is a seven year period that the antichrist will reign. Hallelujah. So as at the time David was writing, this, this was true, that God has not dealt so with any nation. But now there's the nation of Gentiles that have been grafted into the olive tree. I think Galatians chapter three explains it. All right, we have been grafted in. If you're in Christ Jesus, you are an Israelite. albeit a spiritual one. Hallelujah. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Yes, the world has not known them, but we know them because we were grafted in. And then he closes with the injunction again to praise the Lord. Any questions, any thoughts? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalms 148. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him all ye his angels, Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He hath also, he hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapors, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent, his glory is above the earth and heaven, he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. All right, pretty straightforward. There's nothing uh, that I wanna point out. These are all statement of facts and based on the facts, the Bible enjoins us that we praise God. Verse 14, it says he exalts the horn of his people. So God is in your life to do you good. Always remember that no matter what you're going through is in your life to do you good. Glory to God. Any questions, any thoughts? Could you explain what is, what is I know the translation KJV, what does it mean to exalt the horn of his people? Um, the horn of a person is significant of, is significant of glory, is significant of their wellness. Um, it's significant of their well-being. All right, you announce victory with the blast of the horn. Uh, your horn is filled with oil. It always has to do with your wellness. Any other questions? All right, Psalms 149. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. This is one of my very favorite Psalms. Starts with the same injunction to praise the Lord. Tells you how to do it. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And you can sing unto the Lord a new song. 
I make up silly songs with my grandchildren all the time. There's nothing I cannot turn into a song, you know, and we sing and we dance and we just, just mess around. You can sing a song. I can, I can come up with 15 songs, one after the other. All right. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord and sing songs unto him. Sing his praise in the congregation of the saints. So when we're together corporately, we praise him. When you're alone with him, still praise him. Hallelujah. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him rejoice. Apostle Paul said in the book of Philippians, I believe it was, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And when the Bible mentions something twice, it's to tell you of double assurance and the veracity of what the speaker or the author is saying. All right. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Allow the children. Let circumstances allow you to do so. And if they won't do it anyway, this is what the Bible is saying. Why? Because the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He loves to see you praise. He loves to see you dance. He loves to see you joyful. He takes pleasure in you. Amen. He will beautify the meek with salvation. All right. We're already saved. Thank God for that. But you had to be meek to receive salvation. You had to come to a place where you realize your spiritual, uh, that you were spiritually destitute. And you had to come to the Lord to say, Lord, I am a sinner worthy of judgment and death. But because of the finished work of cross that I put my hope and my faith in now, Lord, save me. Be my Lord and my Savior. Once you did that, he gave you salvation. And it's a free gift. Free for you, but costly to him. Hallelujah. He says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Hallelujah. Let the high praises of God. So there are some praises that are high. There are some praises that, and I hate to say this because the world has taken this truth and they've warped it into all manner of religiosity and all, all manner of mind, mind. Let me just use the word mind games because it's broad. They talk about the, 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 the level at which you are vibrating. What is vibrating? Hallelujah. Anyway, it talks about you being joyful to sing aloud on your bed. Let the high praises of God in, uh, be in your mouth. So there's a, there's a level of praise that's higher than just the ordinary one. There's one where you dance until you cannot dance anymore. There's one where you sweat until you are dripping wet. Hallelujah. Depends on how desperate you are for what you want. Dep depends on how desperate you are for the answers you're seeking from God. Hallelujah. I told you about the different levels of prayer. Jesus was praying with word, words. Ask, ASK. He said, ask, and you will receive. That's casual. Hey, can I have $20? Then seek. You are beginning to move stuff around for you to be able to find $20. You are beginning to think. You have paper and pen. You write in all the ideas that are coming to you so that you can generate $20. Right? That's a different level of prayer. And then knock is another level of prayer. The persistence of prayer. Not quitting, not stopping, not backing up, not backing down until you get what it is that you want. Hallelujah. It's the same thing with praise. So we see here, there are high praises of God. All right. And again, I hate to use the word, but there's a particular vibration you get to where everything begins to be shaken a loose. Hallelujah. He says, with the high praises of God in your mouth, a two-edged sword in your hand. Come to 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 4. 1 Corinthians 4, and let's see what a two-edged sword is. Glory to the Lord God Most High. All right, if it's not 1 Corinthians, it's 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is that what I'm looking for? No, it's not. As long as it be the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Hebrews. It's Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Thank you. That's the one I'm looking for. 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. He says the word of God is quick. The word quick means alive. It's an old English word, not quick as in fast. Quick as in alive. The word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of your soul, your spirit, and your body. Rather than mention body, the Bible says joints and marrows. You know joints and marrows are in the body. So the word of God is able to divide asunder between all three. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of your heart. That's what a double-edged sword is, the word of God. So in this psalm, the Bible is telling you praise and the word. Praise and the word. That's how to execute vengeance. Those dangerous prayers are biblical. That's how you execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Hallelujah. If they will not persist, then let God judge them. If by death, so be it. So be it. Hallelujah. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Now you and I know that it's not people that the Bible is referring to. Which king are, do, do you have the, the boldness or the audacity to appear in his palace with chains to say, I want to bind you? He's talking about spiritual entities. You bind them with chains, with the word of God. They're nobles with fetters of iron. And then you execute upon them the judgment that is written. There's a judgment that's written for anybody that's troubling your life and will persist in troubling you and will not, will not take the hands off your children. Or, guys, you, if somebody touches any of my children, you better believe I will pray those prayers because I'm not supposed to bury any one of them. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He says, you execute upon them the judgment that is written. It's an honor for me to say this is what is going to happen. Why? Because I carry that authority and it's not usurped. It was given to me. We need to pray some violent prayers because the Bible says the kingdom of God suffereth violence and it's the violent that take it by force. There's some things you cannot take by gentle Jesus, weak and mild. You have to sit down and weave a cord and then beat all the money changers out of the place. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. That's how it ends. Questions, comments. Psalms 150. And with that, we bring this book, the study of this book to a close. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Not only does God, does God command us to praise, he tells us how to praise. Glory to God. He tells us to praise him with instruments. He tells us to praise him with sounds of the trumpet and the harp and the psaltery and all of that. And if you cannot play any instrument, I'm sure you can play the tambourine. You may not be able to do what professional, professionals do with it, but you, you certainly can slap his face. Commands that we praise him with instruments, praise him in the dance. And then finally, he says, let everything that is breathing. If you are still breathing, the Bible commands you to praise the Lord. I don't know how many times in this one, two, three, four, five Psalms that we read this morning, the word praise the Lord shows up. You would think that God is laying emphasis on it, wouldn't you? Praise is very important. In Acts 16, I think it's 25, the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises. They had just been flogged and they were imprisoned in the innermost recesses of the prison. Not only that, their feet and their hands were in stocks. 
The Bible says at midnight, they sang praises unto God. They did not compare notes how badly they were beaten. They decided to sing praises unto God. And the Bible records that the, the, the very iron bars and gates of where they were locked, even the stocks that the, their hands and their feet were in, all those things loosened of their own accord. Praise is powerful. The children of Israel were going to go against uh, uh, the city of Jericho. Praise. Jehoshaphat was, was confronted by the children of Ammon, Mount Seir, and Moab. He said, appoint me praisers. Doesn't make any kind of sense. It's like you're going to Iraq or Iran to, to go and fight a war. And, and the president says, please call, call Jay-Z, call Beyonce, call uh, to who? I, I don't know who the musician, uh, the singers are today. Call all those people. Let them go in front of the US Marine and the SEAL, Navy SEAL and whatnot. Let the singers go first. Does that make any sense? But God knows what he's doing because praise in the realm of the spirit is warfare. It's not just me singing a song and dancing. It is warfare. And it is, it is, it is an announcement that the war is won before fighting it. Oh God. <laughs> before fighting it, it is announcing to the kingdom of darkness that I have won. Because it's a person who wins a battle that dances and rejoices. Praise his faith. I can't wait to see Jesus. I absolutely cannot wait. These things, these truths, run with them. Run with them. When you start, it will seem funny. Dancing when there's no music or dancing when everything around you doesn't want you to dance. Just try it. You'll be amazed. Whether it's visible or not, changes will be occurring. And eventually the manifestation of it will be made, will be made known. Glory to God. Any questions? It's been a journey in the book of Psalms. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Hallelujah. Any thoughts, any comments? It's a whole chunk of the Bible. All right, if you have no comments, no questions, we can wrap it up. It's five till 10. Okay, let us pray. There's a sign up that says, ask to unmute. What does that mean? Whatever. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we have been able to bring our study of the book of Psalms to a close this morning. It has not been by power. It has not been by might, but by your spirit. There's so much that you have taught us. There's so much that you have shown us. There's more understanding and more clarity we ask, Lord God, that what we have learned will remain with us. What we have learned, we will be conscious to make a part of our daily walk with you. What we have learned, Lord, will serve us. Thank you for the spirit of grace, the blessed teacher the one who opens up scriptures to us, the one who explains scriptures to us. Thank you that you've instructed him to remain and abide with us even to the end of the age. Spirit of God, we do not take you for granted. We truly appreciate you. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank God for uh, our 